Hey, this is Morgan from Fit Ergonomics, and in this video, I'm going to share with you some practical ergonomic solutions for working from home to make sure that your workstation is set up correctly and safely so you can succeed without back pain and fatigue. In the United States, 8 out of 10 people will experience low back pain at some point in their lifetime. Low back pain is the second most frequent reason for doctor visits next to the common cold, and it's the leading cause of job-related disabilities. When you neglect your posture and continually round your back while sitting or standing for prolonged periods, you can set yourself up for back pain. Sedentary jobs that require endless hours of sitting in awkward postures with your back flexed forward can overstretch the muscles and distort the vertebrae, putting unnecessary pressure on your intervertebral discs. And if you're sitting without proper low back support in a static posture without taking breaks, you could potentially strain your back or end up with a bulging or herniated disc. A herniated or slip disc happens when the tough outer layer of the disc degenerates or sustains a trauma and cracks, allowing some of the nucleus pulposa, which is the jelly-like disc center, to protrude out of the disc into the spinal canal. Herniations are most common in the fourth or fifth lumbar vertebrae. This weak spot lies directly under the spinal nerve root, putting direct pressure on the sciatic nerve, causing radiating pain, tingling, and numbness down the legs. Standing to work requires more energy than sitting and can put a greater strain on the circulatory system. When you stand for long periods in a non-neutral, awkward posture, the curve in your lumbar spine, referred to as lordosis, can become excessive, and this too can result in leg swelling, varicose veins, muscle fatigue, and back pain. Lifting objects with a rounded back can put unwanted pressure on the vertebral discs. When you increase the, the distance between the hands and the body, you increase the stress on your lower back. Keeping the body upright, avoiding back flexion, and maintaining a natural lordotic curve are better options when lifting heavy objects around the house. You want to stay in what's referred to as the power zone. Just bend your elbows at 90 degrees and you are in the power zone. The more times you can work in your power zone, the less stress and fatigue you'll feel on your body. An awkward seated posture is precarious if combined with long periods of sitting with an unsupported low back. When you remain in the same seated posture for a long time, your blood flow slows down and the muscles in your back can start to become fatigued. When your body is tired or sore, your risk of injury increases and your productivity and accuracy decrease. When you work in neutral postures, you reduce the stress on your muscles and joints, which decreases your risk of getting injured. So you know you're sitting correctly in neutral posture when your ears are in line with your shoulders, your head, neck, and trunk are facing forward, your shoulders are relaxed and slightly pulled back, your elbows are close to your body and bent at a 90 degree angle, your back is flush against the chair's back, and the S-curve of your lower back is supported. Your knees are level or slightly lower than your hips and there's no pressure on the back of your knees. And lastly, your feet are resting flat on the floor or on a footrest. If you're experiencing back pain or discomfort, there's a good chance it's connected to your chair or how you organize your workspace. So let's take a closer look at these possible culprits and I'll share some helpful ergonomic solutions. Comfort and good posture are key to being more productive at work, even if you're working from home. That's why it's recommended to invest in an adjustable office chair if possible. If the chair has all the functionality that I describe in this section, you should fully adjust the chair first and test its overall fit before purchasing a new chair. So there are only five major chair adjustments you need to make so that it fits you like a glove. Number one, you want to adjust the height of the seat pan so that your feet rest flat on the floor and your knees are slightly lower than your hips. If your feet aren't resting flat on the floor, then lower your chair until they can or use a footrest. If your feet are resting on the floor but your knees are higher than your hips, raise your chair up until your hips are slightly higher than your knees. Number two, adjust the seat pan depth so that there is about a two to four inch gap between the back of your knees and the front edge of the chair when your back is flush against the backrest. 
if there are more than four inches between the front edge of the seat pan and the back of your knees, then slide your seat forward so it provides better thigh support. Number three, adjust the height of the lumbar support so that the curve of the back of the chair fits comfortably into the S-curve of your lower back. If the lumbar support is too high or too low and doesn't fit into your lower back, you'll want to raise or lower your chair back until your lower back is supported. Number four, adjust the tilt of the back of the chair so that it's upright and tilted slightly back. Step five, adjust the armrests so that they are slightly below your elbows with your shoulders relaxed and make sure the armrests don't interfere with your access to keying, mousing, and writing. If your shoulders hunch up while you're resting on the armrest, lower the armrest so that they are slightly below your elbows when your shoulders are relaxed, or if you find yourself needing to reach your shoulders down to rest on the armrest, raise the armrest until they are positioned slightly below your elbows. When working from home, there's often a mismatch between your chair's height and desk height, making it challenging to keep your elbows close to your body. So if you don't have an adjustable chair, you'll need to get creative. One solution is to elevate your seat with pillows or cushions, support your low back with a rolled up towel or lumbar pad, and then raise your laptop onto textbooks so your monitor is closer to eye level. In this scenario, you'll need an external keyboard and mouse. Flat, hard, and even traditionally padded seating surfaces can cause pressure on your coccyx or tailbone. This can cause improper spine alignment, decreased blood circulation, and pinched nerves. Using a memory foam seat cushion with a contoured coccyx space can help eliminate back pain by reducing focused body weight pressure directly on the tailbone. The contour distributes your body weight across the entire seat, allowing your tailbone to float in the open space. When it comes to organizing your workspace, you should arrange it so that there's no need to overreach in any direction. Try and declutter and clear up your space. Overreaching, bending, and twisting can cause fatigue reduce overall productivity, and increase your risk of an overuse injury. All work that you continuously do from your elbows to your fingertips, like using your keyboard and mouse, should be done in your primary work zone. From your shoulder to your fingertips, your secondary zone is reserved for reaching for frequent things, but not constant. And all things you have to get up for occasionally should be in your tertiary zone. Recognize opportunities to get out of your chair and move around. A Cornell University study recommends 28 and 2, 20 minutes of sitting, 8 minutes of standing, and 2 minutes of moving. Instead of leaning back in your chair to take that phone call, stand up and take it, or better yet, walk and talk. Moving around keeps your blood flowing and prevents muscle fatigue and cramping. Change it up and try working in a different area, such as with a standing desk, this helps to decrease fatigue and helps take the pressure off your lower back. Remember these three tips when using a standing desk, even if it's an ironing board. Your monitor height should be slightly lower than your eye height and tilted back 15 degrees. Your desk height should be slightly lower than your elbow height when it's bent approximately 90 degrees. And lastly, when in a standing workspace, stand on something soft or wear running shoes. In ergonomics, they like to say, your best posture is your next posture, so tune into your body. When your fanny says it's been sitting too long, you stand, and when your feet say they've been standing too long, you sit. Now that you're an expert at preventing back pain while working from home, I'd like to invite you to take my self-assessment quiz to determine how much you really know about setting up an ergonomic home office. Just go to fitergonomics.com slash quiz. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button to be alerted when I publish my next video.